Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Rafika Sarjan. He is the Executive Director of the Union of Advanced Technology Enterprises. The organization plans to expand one of its major projects, the Armat Engineering Laboratories. Welcome, Mr. Kasarjan. Thank you very much for having me. Recently, you were the speaker of an online uh, discussion hosted by ARPA Institute, which focuses on analysis, research and planning in Armenia. And the topic was, what are the technological needs for a strong post-war Armenia? So let me ask you the same question. What are the needs? What is Armenia lacking? And what is the potential of the country to grow? And what should the IT companies do uh, for, uh, to help to achieve these goals? So I think the most important thing is to have a strong economy uh, because a strong economy and uh, allows you to invest in as a country and as a society in a number of different areas. So even though we don't want to think about sort of business being above all else, for example, it is uh, something that will drive the development of everything from education to healthcare to um, sort of uh, you know uh, fixing social inequities uh, and of course uh, uh, more important things as well. Not just more important, but important things such as defense of the country and security. So I think that in continuing to invest in developing technological capabilities and the best way to invest in technical technological capabilities is in education as well as in scientific research. So those are the two areas that, uh, again, from, a, from our union's perspective, we've always focused on education as being an important part of developing the right talent that can help to drive economic growth, not just in IT, but in other sectors as well, but also from a scientific perspective, because there are some things that, you know, not everything in terms of new innovation can be left to purely private sector. There are th some things in terms of fundamental um, sciences that should be done at the, at the scientific research level. Um, actually, this is what your um, organization is focusing on. So could you give us an overview of what Armat Engineering Laboratories project is? Yes. Um, we started, we launched Armat in different formats uh, in 2012-13, but since 2015 it's been under the Armat kind of formal program. And the idea is to give 10 to 18 year olds, uh, eventually in every school in the country, an ability to learn about uh, sort of the main components of, of technology. So not just, but uh, programming, software programming, but also robotics and 3D modeling. So these are all, so it's not just software, but also how software and hardware work together. The plan is developed using uh, some of the best techniques from around the world that have been either, that have, some have been adapted to Armenia, some have been developed in Armenia, uh, and it helps these kids develop these capabilities. And as the, probably the best um, uh, outcome of what we've done, uh, we'll, we'll, more than 80% of uh, children that have gone through the ARMAT program are, ex are accepted to universities in Armenia. And of those, almost 90% um, are choose a, uh, you know, a math or science or physics uh, uh, um, degree. So kind of very, very good results. And we believe this is important because they're not just to concentrate it in Yerevan. That's why from day one, we started actually in the regions and continue to do that. And we believe that this uh, uh, capability and opportunity should be available to every child uh, in Armenia. How many of these projects are implemented in the regions and in Yerevan? So we have a total of 565 uh, Armat labs in, throughout Armenia and Artsakh. And of those, uh, I don't have the exact breakdown for Yerevan, but, uh, but let's just say we actually came to Yerevan late. Uh, we started much more in the regions and we, uh, our plan is to either cover every school in the country or in some cases, if there are communities where the school population, for example, um, you know, is very small, then it will create an ability for those children to be able to study in a nearby ARMAT lab. But the idea is that every child should have that, uh, that opportunity. So you have already some um, successful stories about this with children. What kind of results do you get so far? Did you get so far? So I think the most important one is what I already named in terms of acceptance to, I mean, if we take into account that, um, you know, more than half of the students that are going through the program have done so outside of Yerevan, and that, and that we have you know 85 percent uh, acceptance rates to university, 84 percent acceptance rates to universities. I mean that's a, that's I think a pretty um, uh, good great achievement. 
and, uh, and we see that uh, these kids are better prepared to then follow uh, or have a better foundation to continue their education uh, in, in universities or for the, for the boys to have these capabilities to take them to more sort of a, uh, a, 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 a military service that requires more sort of knowing more about technology. And we expect now, I mean, it, it's been five years, but the doubling of the number of, of labs that happened really in 2019. And because of 2020, COVID and the war, uh, I think we'll see starting next year, we'll see the real benefits of having such a line, uh, such a line, such a wide expansion of the program to cover most of the country. You just talked about military and um, uh, we will come back to this. Yes. Uh, your organization also announced recently the launch of Armat Airborne. Uh, it's unmanned aerial vehicle education lab program. Essentially, it's a drone. Um, what's the goal of this project? Look, we live in a t at a time where drones or different kinds of unmanned um, vehicles will become more important, and not just in military. Uh, in areas such as agriculture, in areas such as um, first aid and civil defense, um, in, uh, in healthcare. Uh, certainly in delivery of different kinds of goods to different kinds of places. So again, I think this is generally getting back to the first comment that I made that in terms of economic development and technology playing a key role here, I think drones will be a strong part of that. And the program is aimed at 15 to 18 year olds. So these are kind of the more advanced uh, uh, participants that are, through it, that are part of our regular RMAT uh, program and has three components to it. So it's uh, the, the um, design and construction of, uh, of drones, the piloting and control of drones, and also servicing, technical servicing of drones. One of the differences between our program and similar programs that have been announced here in Armenia is that most programs focus on copter type drones. Our program includes an instruction and actual live uh, control includes both fix, uh, a copter and fixed wing, uh, which means that the, that the, the types of uses that, uh, that for drone uses that these children are being prepared for it is much wider than some of the other programs. Uh, so uh, these three letters, UAV, as I said, me, uh, they mean unmanned aerial vehicles, and they have become a very familiar, uh, they have become very familiar for Armenians uh, since uh, these are devices that were used by Turkey and Azerbaijan during uh, the Karabakh, the Karabakh uh, last full war. Um, Armenia had few and low efficiency UAVs uh, during those uh, dark during this dark period, and we know that we are now in a period of ceasefire. So the uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan did not sign a final peace agreement. So the scenario the, of a future war is something that should not be neglected. So what would the development of your project uh, could uh, give to Armenia in terms of military strategy? So. Um First of all, let me say that uh, I agree that both we saw in this current war, and not just in the Armenia war, but also we've seen in similar wars in Libya and Syria and Yemen and other places, that UAVs are playing a much more important role. Now, one thing to be clear, though, UAVs are not the only determinant in how to fight a successful uh, you know, fifth generation war. Uh, UAVs and the information that they gather and the, um, uh, and the operations that they can do uh, are only successful if they're better integrated and coordinated into an overall um, sort of military approach and uh, both from a strategy and tactics perspective. But nevertheless, they play a very important role. Look, what we are doing is making sure that our, the next generations are prepared on these new kinds of technologies, which means that for the boys going into, the, into military service, which they would do right after they graduate from this program, they understand the basics of how drones work, they know how to fly drones, and they know how to service drones if something goes wrong. Obviously, there are hundreds if not thousands of types of drones around the world, and there'll be many that will be either developed or bought or used in Armenia, and it's not like we're preparing every student to know how to work every drone, but the principles are all the same. Uh, so, um, you know, imagine uh, that in the, uh, uh, in the next conflict, you have the need for a much larger use of drones on our side. I think it's not difficult to imagine, it's, it's, it's a likelihood. If you have kids that have already gone through the basics, uh, it will make it easier for them to be parts of some military squadrons or other units that can better, that can more easily actually adapt to whatever technology the Army is using as opposed to starting from zero. 
this is also true, for example, uh, when, we, when we talk about sort of uh, active reserve or rapid mobilization. So people that have gone through military training or for some reason haven't and need to be, uh, need, get called up as reservists because of the situation, they'll also be better prepared to, uh, to be able to do this. But again, I wanted, one of the important things is that uh, we fully understand that there are different needs that Armenia has as it relates to technology and as it relates to drones. Military is certainly one of them, and we can't, uh, we're in no way sort of trying to ignore that, but we also believe this will be very helpful in other areas of, uh, of growing the country. And um, I mean, your project has obviously a cost. Um, uh, what do you need to fulfill these costs? What do you need people to be more involved, or what is needed now to do? So it's a great question. So if I go back to our ARMAT program, the core ARMAT program, uh, that was initially uh, funded primarily in terms of the establishment of the labs uh, through private sector. So basically UAT working with our members and other, and other uh, benefactors to launch the labs. The expansion that happened in 2019 was done in conjunction with the government. And so uh, the government uh, actually made a very large investment to double the number of labs. Um, and, and they also uh, uh, are responsible for the salary of the, uh, of the, of the instructors running the labs. We fully expect, I mean, to, if we want to get to 65 labs around the country, which is our uh, uh, eight, um, UAV labs in particular, um, uh, which is our target, so that we have in all the major cities uh, uh, in, in Yerevan and some of the larger cities, multiple ones, and in a way that can serve all of the neighboring regions, right? It's very important, again, that this be accessible to all kids that are interested in it. Um, I think our, our total budget just to launch those labs is close to 420 million drums, if I'm not, uh, or 450 million drums. I mean, that's not a small amount. Of course, we have uh, friends and benefactors that will continue to support us from a private sector, but we strongly believe, strongly believe that the government needs to play an active role in the, in the development uh, and expansion of this program as well. So you're not... Uh, asking some support from the diaspora? For no, of course we are. And when I say yes. private benefactors, I also I mean, definitely mean uh, the, the diaspora. We're in the process actually of setting up uh, a foundation in the U.S. Uh, to be able to take donations from there as well. So we expect a lot of your uh, listeners to, to, uh, to learn more about this and hopefully can participate in that as well. Um, let's talk more about you. Um, Mr. Kasarjan, so you moved from the U.S. in 2008 and you are involved in many sectors b besides engineering. Uh, you are the board member of Repat Armenia Foundation. You are the co-founder of Impact Hub, which is a co-working space in Armenia. You have worked in the banking sector. So what motivates you to stay here and be so dynamically uh, involved in the development of the country? I think it's the last sentence. I mean, I think to, for anyone to get a chance to be involved in creating um, something that, uh, that, being part of creating something and developing something that, that, will, uh, that, that will have a return, not just to us as Armenians, but to the world. I mean, I think it's very, a lot of us grew up with uh, the dream of having a free and independent Armenia and to be able to be part of that development in any way is really important. Secondly, uh, it was very important for, for us, for our children to grow up in this environment and to also have a very strong connection to uh, to their Armenian uh, roots, and and and, thir and third, I think it's just uh, you know, even with all the difficulties throughout the years, I think Armenia is a fantastic place to live and work, um, and uh, we're very glad that we're here. Thank you very much for this talk. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for watching and continue to follow Civilnet.